Okay, so we have experienced our first interruption. <laughs> so I apologize for that. My son was asleep, so I started recording, but apparently I woke him up as um, I was recording. So I had to, I couldn't find a pause button on this machine for some reason. It's a little bit different than the way it is when I'm at work. Um, there's a pause button when I'm at work. We've seen that in class, but here there is no pause button. So whenever I get an interruption like that, if I can't just um, mute it for a second while the children disappear, um, I have to stop the recording. Um, I'll do some more um, investigation to figure out how I can get a pause button on there, but for the meantime, um, we just gotta keep working with what we've got. So we'll keep going here. So the next topic was rational exponents and it's non-unit fraction exponent with the whole number base. So that's what the title's called, but essentially you're doing the problem exactly as you would before. Now if my calculator gives me decimals, then I'm not gonna be able to do this problem in the calculator. So let me see, raise it to the three over two, um, and it does work it out for me, so great. But again, if you were to convert this into what it means, it means the square root of 16 to the third power. Or I could write the square root of 16 to the third power, which is the same thing as saying the square root of 16 is four, and four to the third power is 64, okay? Again, for now, they're numbers, so we can use the calculator. But when these things are no longer numbers, like in this topic down here, it is good to know what those exponents mean, okay? So here we have this problem, so we're gonna type it in exactly the way it is, parentheses, fraction one over 125, close the parentheses, exponent, and it's negative two over three. And the calculator gives me 25. If I want to do this by hand, um, I, oh, there's another problem here underneath my calculator. If I wanted to do this um, by hand, it's a little bit trickier because we need to put the index, but then we need to remember that it's a negative. So remember what a negative does is it takes your fraction and it flips it upside down. So this negative will cause this to become 125 over 1. And now it's a positive exponent, which is the same as just saying 125 to the 2 thirds. So that's the cube root of 125 squared. The cube root of 125 is 5, and if I square that, I get 25. Let's work on this one. So remember, this is flipping the fraction around. If there's no fraction, put it over 1, and then ta-da, there is a fraction, right? So again, if you want to get rid of that negative, you have to swap these around, so this becomes 1 eighth to the 2 thirds. Now the two thirds doesn't apply just to the one, it applies to the whole one eighth. So we do need to put in the parentheses there to indicate that the two thirds is for the entire number one eighth. So in my calculator, I will type parentheses one eighth, close the parentheses, exponent two over three, and I get one fourth. And again, if you were to use the symbols, you could type the cube root of one eighth raised to the second power, the cube root of one is one, the cube root of eight is two, and if I raise that to the second power, one to the second power is one, two to the second power is four, and so you get the same result. Now here it's where those rules are really gonna be important because now I don't have numbers as my bases, so I can't just type them in my calculator. I'm going to have to do this um, by hand. So it says the product rule, simplify, use the variable, that represents it says assume the variable that represents a positive real number this is just because if these things are negatives this would not be a real number because you can't take the square root of a negative right um, so some funny things can happen if your variables actually represent negative numbers so to make sure that no one is thinking about that um, they go ahead and just assume that all the variables are positive numbers. you don't have to worry about whether something is not a real number or whether it is and things like that they'll all be real numbers okay um, so what we're doing here is we're applying the old rule that says if you have one base with an exponent times the same base with an exponent and you're multiplying them, what you do is you add their exponents. So this expression here would become v to the 4 over 7 plus 1 over 2, which if I type that in my calculator, 4 over 7 plus 1 over 2 is actually 15 over 14. 
and it's all it's wanting me to do is just combine it and simplify it okay um, so once you get this you can stop there and you're done okay if they divide make sure that you're um, using the rule for division which is to subtract the exponents but we'll probably see that in just a minute so here's the next topic oh and there it is the quotient rule so remember that rule that rule is if you have something in the numerator same base but a different exponent or the same exponent in the denominator you have to take the top exponent minus the bottom exponent so this expression would become x to the one half minus four to the seventh which let me see what that is I get um, x to the negative 1 over 14 and this would be my result oh wait maybe not it says write your answer using only positive exponent so if I I cannot box this because this is not my final answer since that is not a positive exponent so let's go ahead and come in here and write that as a positive so the negative what does it do it flips the fraction upside down if there is no fraction, imagine that it's over 1. So when I flip it, it becomes 1 over x and then to the positive 14. 1 over 14. Okay, let's go on to the next expression. So here we will do w to the 6 7 minus 3 fourths. So 6 over 7 minus 3 over 4. Oh, there's something weird going on in my problem. So 6 over 7 minus 3 over 4, and we get 24 over 25. Now this is positive, so I don't need to do anything with it. This is the final answer here. Now the next topic is rational expressions, or I'm sorry, rational exponents, products, and quotients with negative exponents. So the directions say to simplify the expression, write your answer using only a positive exponent. So again, if you end up with a negative, you need to flip it over to make it positive exponent. Um, and the same thing as always, assume your variables represent positive real numbers, so you can never say that the answer is not a real number, okay? So we do have to follow the rules here. So it's x to the one-third minus a negative three-fourths which actually means I'm gonna end up adding those, right? Because the negative and the negative, so one over three, it'll actually turn into plus three over four. And I get 13 over 12, not negative. So this is my final answer. Let's see over here. We have top exponent minus a bottom negative. So then that becomes negative one third, negative and negative actually means plus one ninth. Oh, I'm doing it again negative one-third plus one-ninth. And I get y to the negative two-ninths. This is a negative exponent, so if I imagine this as if it's over one, to make it positive, this fraction has to flip over, and then now it's raised to the positive two-ninths. Okay, 